Um, all right, let's do this. I want to talk about Minnesota a little bit. Uh, yes, so man. people will be of have, have seen uh, a couple of clips. This is the first one, short one. A guy named, uh, what's his, not Steve, I think it is, Drazkowski. Mr. President, I have yet to meet a person in Minnesota that is hungry. Yet today. I have yet to meet a person in Minnesota that says they don't have access to enough food to eat. Also, look at the lady in the back. uh, Look up from her. her face. (laughs) Okay. Um, So that's Steve Juskowski, and he is speaking against Minnesota. Uh, moving forward legislation now signed by Governor Waltz to make it Minnesota the fourth state that uh, uh, has universal school lunch. And to, uh, like ag- it's actually universal uh, school lunch and breakfast. Um, nice. but two meals uh, for kids. Uh, that's 820,000 in the state of Minnesota. Uh, one in four, or wait, one in six of those uh, have trouble with food uh, uh, insecurity. One in four of those that do have trouble with food insecurity do not qualify for the federal bullshit. So it's like, well, I'm hungry, but also can't get this, so I'm falling through the cracks. And this could start as early as July. This is an advancement of COVID era policy which is saying, okay, we're going to use these schools uh, to feed people during this pandemic, which is, I contend, the reason you see people like the Koch brothers freak out about, or the one that's alive, about the pandemic response and the shutdown. Mm -hmm. Look, there are downsides to shutting down with a pandemic. Otherwise, we just do it without a pandemic, right? But I think the things that they're really afraid of is like the uh, expanded unemployment and these sorts of measures to feed people. And in the context of us, uh, uh, Minnesota had a, a, a record rise in demand for uh, food banks last fall. A few months before the go- the, um, the legislature got together in Washington, D.C., and was like, yeah, we don't need SNAP benefits anymore. Get rid of those. So you've literally seen explosions in uh, hunger that, you know, occasionally you'll get a Republican to s- talk about because it's like, oh, inflation, you can't buy eggs. People really really care about it. But then you see stuff like this and you realize like, don't give a fuck. And so like the, uh, the bill, uh, passed 70 to 58 in the house party lines and passed, uh, 38 to 26 in the Senate, uh, where the democratic farm labor, uh, Democrat, the Democrats go by Minnesota. Um, they have a one seat majority, but they got some Republican Senator, not of course, Ryskowski. Um, but you know, like this, the idea that you would, um, I, I don't know, like I, I found this very frustrating. Ben Shapiro has this, uh, we can just throw this in here too. Like this, the, 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 there's a, it's one thing for these guys to be talking about cutting taxes for rich people. That offends yeah. me too. To be coming out here and saying this. If government can protect kids from the sick radical left, shouldn't they also protect kids from hunger? Wouldn't it make sense to strengthen food stamps and have school lunch be free since some kids are in school lunch debt? Uh, well, I mean, if you are a parent, school lunches are not going to solve the problem of child hunger at any serious level. If, if there is a problem of children actually starving, that is a child endangerment scenario to which CPS needs to be called. Uh, if you're talking about like, actual child starvation, the truth is- I mean, so just like, yeah, th- like, so no no more is uh, Joe Biden's inflation causing like uh, trouble for working families. Now it's, oh, your kid's hungry? Better have the state come take your fucking kid from you. Yeah, which is a- another system that's very well funded. Yeah, right. And people are taken care of in that system, right? I mean, like ugh. the depravity there um, is so unbelievably disgusting um, to be to be talking in, in the way that Shapiro is talking about families that are struggling to get by, right? Nothing again. Um, you know, we, we were talking a little bit earlier in the show about like the new pro labor, pro family, pro worker right. Um, look at how the Republicans in Minnesota are lining up on the question about whether or not we should feed kids um, at school. And uh, Ben Shapiro then saying that uh, we should take kids away from their families, um, you know, if, if if they're struggling. I mean, the height of, I mean, it's, it's, Can it's, you it's, imagine it's, like, I can't, I can't, I don't know how, like the amount of fucking suffering that is just around us by choice 
because of things Chosen, like the yeah. like the like the like oh fuck snap we're done with that covid's over uh th- th- we're done with that stuff just deciding and and to have like you know we have uh, uh mathematical sciences to the point where we can actually graph oh this many people is going to be hungry now and and it's not for anything to do with their work ethic it's to do with mm. dc being like oh yeah let's stop uh doing that yeah well, we're not going to raise the minimum wage in this country for however long it's been now right i mean and like i mean yeah you know three million people in texas are going to lose their their health care in the coming months many of them children um and it's so i mean look it's disgusting on any logic um and it should be more disgusting than by their perverse logic on, on the right. But like, what is the right solution to poverty? What is the right solution to crime? What is the right solution to education? All this kind of stuff is the family. And to basically say, I'm going to wage war on families who are struggling across the board in this country. Say, I, I'm going to encourage the state, uh, again, the big bad state, the nanny state, the state we don't want, right, to come in and rip children away from their family because um people aren't able to get by on the wages that they're getting paid to i mean it is it is the height of cruelty the height of of hypocrisy and of course it's not going to get you any points or change the game but it's just like these are disgusting people that you should treat yeah. with with contempt this is not like oh i have a disagreement on on this issue or that issue you are a bad person if you were saying i don't think children should be fed um or i think that children should be ripped from their mothers and fathers um yeah. because to, because to just uh, deny it just deny that you could feed people and to say actually what we need to do is to threaten these struggling people with and having for their what kids i mean and for what for like a budget line on the state goddamn budget i mean it's insane um the penny pinching the miserly like behavior yeah. of these people like there is something that is like so universal um, that like, you know, it's like, this is again, like, you know, the, the conservatism is an anti-social movement. It's an anti-society movement because like things like public school, things like uh, free, um, food, right. Paid for by the community for children mm-hmm. should not only be something that you should like aspire um, to, but it should be something you should be really damn proud of. Right. Mm-hmm. If you think about human history, right. And like, look, these people love to talk about, oh, it's so much better now than it was 250 years ago. Right. They love, oh, well, the king of France couldn't get strawberries in January. Right. That's mm-hmm. their shit. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So then should we be celebrating in those spoils by doing things like making lives nice for the children, for the next generation of our society? Right. right. And all you get is this nasty antisocial shit from the right. Um you know, it's 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 a really anti-human, anti-social ideology that makes you line up against something that should should just be universally beloved, not just for like the horrors of the system that it like attacks and tries to rectify. But even if we lived in a society, right, Matt? Like, let's even just say like we live in a society where everybody's baselines were met. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't that be something you should be proud of? Saying like, as a society, we make sure that no kid's gonna go hungry. Because again, even if you're saying that like, oh, there's no real poverty, like that one motherfucker was saying, right? We're not mm-hmm. gonna let any kind of like snafu, right? Oh, kid forgot his card, or like kid forgot their lunch payment, or whatever the fuck this yeah. month or this week. Um, we're not gonna make some kid go through the humiliation of not being able to get food at lunch, right? Like. You should be proud of a society that can provide that for children. That's how you should measure a society yeah. is what we do to kids. And uh, these people encouraging barbarism, encouraging scarcity, encouraging pain, nothing more evil. And like, obviously, it's personal for me as somebody who grew up on food stamps, somebody who grew up on free lunches, right? All these things created me. I'm like, hell, you know, like I'm a tall, fit dude. And like, you know, you wonder sometimes when you look at like, I mean, one of the best things you can say about Lula, for example, is that like, mm-hmm. You could see it in the bone density of children. Do you know what I mean? Like that's what that administration <laughs> did for people in Brazil. And like that's the, they want to go back to a class society in this country. And it's already here in a lot of ways, but they want to make mm-hmm. it really clear where you can see rich and poor people. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like I come into yeah. a room sometimes and people think I'm like a fancy silver spoon boy, maybe because the way I care of myself or whatever. But like there was a time in human history, like you could tell if you grew up in poverty, if you didn't. Right. Right. And they want that social physical marker to come back into place. Yeah. I mean, I've said this before, but like, I think this is like to accept like a demonic idea exists. It is this one of taking (laughs) the food out of fucking people's mouth. And there's this, there's this thing, um, 
Peter Leinbaugh, uh, who I've had uh, we've had on the show um, from this book, Red Round Globe Hop Burning. And I talked to him about this passage, but I, I can't get it out of my mind. Uh, uh, this is from uh, Joseph Townsend, who was a contemporary of uh, Malthus. Hunger will tame the fiercest animals. It will teach decency and civility, obedience and subjection to the most perverse. In general, it is only hunger which can spur and goad the poor on to labor. Yet Allah has said they shall never hunger. The laws must be confessed, have likewise said that they shall be compelled to work. Let's skip a little bit ahead here now. Um, whereas hunger is not only peaceable, silent, unremitting pressure, but as the most natural motive to industry and labor, it calls forth the most powerful exertions. And when satisfied by the free bounty of another, lays lasting and sure foundations for goodwill and gratitude. The slave must be compelled to work, but the free man should be left to his own judgment and discretion. Should be protected in the full enjoyment of his own, be it uh, much or little, and be punished when he invades his neighbor's property. So that's just like, that's that's Western thought for you there um and to the extent that like we we maintain hunger it is because of this it's because of control over these sorts of people and and uh you know you get and you can't just say that so like now you have this the the star tribune uh, who i want to bring in here because they they published this uh piece Provide school meals to those in need, but Minnesota families that can afford to pay their own program, pay their own way, shouldn't be eligible in the expanded program. And it talks about how under, how much it understands this stuff, but it's excessive in our view. Millions of dollars that would be spent uh, to feed more affluent students would be better spent in other areas. Now, let's just pause there and talk about the uh, virtues of universal programs. That lunch is going to be better if poor kid, if if rich kids yes. have to eat it. Like it, and so like to the extent that Ben Shapiro wants to talk about actually these aren't even that good of meals anyway, which he did in a follow up tweet. Um, yeah, well, actually, Universal will will go some way to uh, taking care of that as well. And also, you had the chance to feed all the kids in what do they call it a surgical way, a surgical and uh, you know very crafted. You failed. And you had hungry kids for how fucking long? And so, no, there's no more time for that shit anymore. Everyone gets it. Thank you, Tim Waltz. You know, uh, I mean, like, there's there's two things on, on, on this, right? It's like, um, when, I mean, I saw some really odious ones from Republicans, too, saying, like, this is taking away the privilege from parents of being able to provide for their children, which is such an insane aspect. I mean, like, again, trying to find ways to say you don't want poor yes. kids to be fed. Um, but, two, like, you see this from time to time. And like I'm not attacking the sentiment. Like the, what we provide for for kids in, in in public school lunches is not as adequate and robust as it no. should be. But you'll see, like, oh, we're going to compare like a French school to an American school. It's like, well, you know, the real reason for that is like we actually have a very robust um, system for feeding uh, poor and underserved kids in, in this country. It hasn't developed and expanded as much as it should. But compared to other countries, right? The reason that like school lunches aren't great in this country is not because, oh, the Americans have a bad diet or the Americans have bad taste. It's because it's for poor people and we have a very classed welfare yeah. system in this country. Right. So, like, I totally agree that, like, you know, if you're saying the school lunches are, are of low quality, the best way to change that is to make those universal and having other people be eating it uh, than to just sort of segment off the poor kids off into eating whatever it is being fed to them <laughs> at yeah. the, in the cafeteria. Um, no, I mean, I think that that's that's a really great point. Because, anyways, I don't know. Like, whenever I see those, um, the, the the point is always like, "Oh, Americans have bad diet, and Americans blah blah blah." And it's like, no, the reason is because this is for poor working families, right? Is yeah. the reason that it's that way. Um, and like, I mean, we've talked about this before on the show. I, I recall, Matt. I mean, the the cafeteria caters to two different groups at a lot of schools. Like at mine, if you went and you got the general school lunch, you got the weird shit right yeah the the mystery meat and if you paid the six seven dollar or whatever a la carte options you got mm-hmm. the nice stuff right it was yep. tiered system very clear yeah. <laughs> just the absolutely two-tiered system commerce you know you can either get this nasty public thing which i'll be honest i did like the chicken uh both the patties oh, yeah. and the nuggets growing up um but yeah then there's a special extra area where you can get like the 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 fre- like the good mozzarella sticks and like, <laughs> yeah. the, and like the ice cream and shit like that and it's like damn i got i'm, I'm blowing eight dollars on what used to be free fucking uh dude uh, i will say though my my high school cafeteria had a very good 
chicken bog, which is a super like South Carolina low country dish, but it's also like it works well with Southern cooking because Southern cooking is already like poor food. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like chicken, sausage, rice, so damn good. Um, but before we move on, I do want to, if you don't mind, Matt, just play a second of the yellow parenti as everyone, you know, of internet fame, yellow parenti clips. Um, just going back to how antisocial and nasty the um, the right is. I'm I agree with Parenti here that like I'm with the movements that feed the kids. <laughs> so you compare a country to what it came from with all its imperfections and those who demand instant perfection. The day after the revolution, they get up and say, are there civil liberties for the fascists? <laughs> are they going to be allowed to have their newspapers and their radio program? Are they going to be able to keep all their farms? The passion that some of our liberals feel the day after the revolution, the passion and concern they feel for the fascists, the civil rights and civil liberties of those fascists who were dumping and destroying and murdering people before. Now the revolution has got to be perfect. It's got to be flawless. Well, that isn't my criteria. My criteria is what happens to those people who couldn't read. What happens to those babies that couldn't eat, that died of hunger? And there, that's why I support revolution. The revolution that feeds the children gets my support. Not blindly, not unqualified. <laughs> and the Reaganite government that tries to stop that kind of process, that tries to keep those people in poverty and illiteracy and hunger, that gets my undiluted animosity and opposition. Mm. Yellow Parenti on fire there, I think. <laughs> I mean, undiluted animosity. That is like, I've been stewing about this Ben Shapiro shit. It's for so, like I mean, it's so evil. Week. It's really like, it really like takes you <laughs> back. Cause like, I, I mean, I've been doing this job for like seven, eight yeah. fucking years now. And it's like, you know, you get, you see a lot of stuff about, you know, support of the cops uh, that really kind of makes you sick. But like, don't the kid, feed the, the kids the, the and take their the, yeah. fucking kidnap them. Like Jesus Christ. That's it is. And I think it's, it's good to re-highlight that. Cause that is, that's worse than even some of the other shit that they're into. Not that it's the other stuff isn't materially bad. Not that it doesn't have like serious effects, you know, not that it doesn't matter, but like, this is the most baseline come into that conversation with whatever preconceptions you have about the world. Yeah, I think the the kids don't deserve to eat. I mean, that's as contemptuous <laughs> as it gets. That's a disqualifying statement. 